systemic change, a world that needed somebody to take a stand. This was my breakthrough moment, and the moment caused me to redefine my own course in life, to channel my experience as an educator towards the instruction of new generations, and work towards equipping them with the resources to pursue root causes, the inspiration to step into a situation at its source, the intellectual scope to perceive the big picture, and the perseverance to solve life's puzzles by paying attention to all of the pieces. To help affect change in a more organic way, I felt it was important to nurture the actors of change, caring children who would grow into concerned adults. It became my goal to cultivate in students and whole schools the confidence and compassion to perceive all possibilities and stare down wrong. With great respect for its history and tradition, accompanied by great hope of helping guide its future, four years ago I linked my path with that of Horace Mann School and cemented the deep bond I share with you, your class, your families, the faculty who taught you, and the staff who looked out for you, from your entry here as students to this day. Much has been said about this class, its strengths and its sensitivities. You have also been told and are aware on your own of the challenges that face you as you leave a loving school for a world with issues as critical as in many a year before. But please, don't misunderstand. We, your teachers who shepherded your education, your families who steadied and cheered your earliest steps, do not speak of these challenges to thrust upon you the responsibility of finding solutions or the burden of pulling the rest of us through. Nor do we endow you the task of righting all wrongs. At commencement, we bid only that you live life, not live life in the margins, but continue the direction, continue along the direction you have encouraged, have been encouraged to follow in your years at Horace Mann, to search and stretch your hearts and minds, first and foremost, towards your own fulfillment, and through this pursuit toward the well-being of others. For when circumstance calls, you have the capacity to step out to center stage. We ask that you remain always self-aware, for inside you already is the source of much solace in both the abilities native to you and in those who have allowed us to help you. Know that wherever you go, your presence will make an impact. Your quiet dignity will command attention. Your voice will be heard because it is worth hearing. And should you encounter things awry in this world, you will be equipped to inject thoughtful insight and have the ability to force a pause when a pause is long overdue. Whether you go on to analyze through your intellectual power, innovate through your scientific acumen, amend through your political savvy, or enlighten through your art, the quality of character inherent in the legacy of this class's years at Horace Mann has shown this possibility to be within your grasp. Many of you have read or heard about a recent Atlantic Monthly article entitled, What Makes Us Happy? The article traces a groundbreaking study for 72 years that followed the lives of the men of the Harvard University class of 1942. Initiated by a Harvard physician and funded by department store magnate W.T. Grant, the study aimed to draw on the ongoing experiences of well-educated, physically, and emotionally well-situated undergraduates whose lives, as they matured through the years, might shed light on the question of how, on the whole, one could find fulfillment in life. Most of the participants in the study remain anonymous, identified only by their case numbers. But Washington Post editor Ben Bradley revealed that he was a grand study member. So too was John F. Kennedy. Dr. Charles Upton Lowe, was a participant as well. Before going to Harvard and becoming part of one of the longest running and most comprehensive studies of mental health and physical well-being in history, Charles Lowe attended Horace Mann, graduating in the class of 1938. While the Horace Mann School, or the Horace Mann High School for Boys, 
of his day was a bit different than today, profound parallels exist between Dr. Lowe's class and the class of 2009. Charles and his peers entered HM at the height of the economic security of the 1930s and graduated into a world of international instability. Yet, at age 87, 71 years since his HM graduation, Dr. Lowe shared the same words many of you have expressed in recent days. I loved Horace Mann, he said. It was a wonderful place that prepared me for everything I've done since. Recalling by name teachers who had instructed him in Latin, chemistry, and math, Dr. Lowe continued, I had teachers who inspired me and friends I kept up with for years. Dr. Lowe would go on to a distinguished career in medicine. Nevertheless, a quintessential researcher, Dr. Lowe, takes issues with some aspects of the happiness study he was part of for over six decades. Still, he feels the exhaustive questionnaires he was asked to fill out, sometimes annually, pushed him to a heightened and healthy sense of introspection. All of us in the grant study, he said, experienced enough negatives, but I think that being asked to look at our lives so often over the years made some of us try to look at the positives. Thus, with a pretty good take on life from the long view, he was deeply thoughtful in passing his observations along to the class of 2009. Said Dr. Lowe, at my age, you still wonder what truth is. What I can say is, it is important to lay out your ambitions and have ambitions that are realistic, even if you have to work hard to achieve them. It is important to have good friends you can talk to and stay connected to them always. And yes, it has been rewarding to accomplish something for others. I have to say aim high, connect with friends, achieve what you set out to do. What makes us happy? What is fulfillment? For me, fulfillment has been meshing my journey with yours as your teacher, friend, and head of school for the past four years. For all of us here applauding you today, I know I can say that happiness is found in this kind of moment, your moment of commencement, and in feeling secure in knowing you leave this school with all that it takes to make the rest that follows momentous, each in your own way. Stay in touch, visit often, remain connected. We are here for you. We love you. Thank you 